And the church said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Brown is on a staycation. I think he needed a little break, but uh, we will allow him to do that. Amen? Amen. Especially as he's been preaching for 50 years straight. And we will celebrate him with cake and ice cream. <laughs> there's nothing, there's no better way to celebrate a man that's been ordained for 50 years. I think a couple, a couple years ago we celebrated 50 years of ministry. And he, he really enjoyed that if you've seen the pictures. And, uh, but he's been uh, ordained for 50 years. So congratulations to Pastor Brown and Connie. Uh, they actually didn't go anywhere that staycation. But I think they welcomed some friends in so they're having fun. They're probably at McDonald's eating an Egg McMuffin in the, in the ball pit, if I know them. But uh, God loved them, we love them, and God bless them. And may they be refreshed all the more in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, today is what? Do you guys know? What is it? Shh, keep it down. Keep it down. Keep it down. Don't get too Pentecostal. Yes, it's Pentecost Sunday. It's 50 days from Easter Sunday, and guess what? We've been in here 50 days. Seven weeks ago, we opened this, this door, and so hallelujah, we've been here seven weeks and 50 days, and so that's what Pentecost Sunday is. It's 50 days from Easter where the Holy Spirit filled the 120 saints, and we celebrate the birth of the church, and we pray for more, 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 more of the Holy Spirit especially for those in this, gathered in this room, amen? And so that's what we're going to talk about, more of the Holy Spirit. And may He fill you, fill this room this morning. Pray more of the Holy Spirit and the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in this room and on all of us this morning. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Well, I love you. Looking forward to speaking this morning. I, I always thank Pastor Brown for the opportunity. I don't take it lightly, but that's the name of my sermon. I know your bulletin says evidence, but if you have more of the Holy Spirit, you will have evidence. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So more equals a greater amount. So make that our prayer this morning. So I just want to start off by saying this. Um, growing up in the 80s, um, I was born in 1978. And as I've, as you, as you become a fan of, of 80s television and 80 movies, there was very easy to become a, a fan of superheroes. And I was always a fan of, of, of Spider-Man, Superman, of course, the Christopher Reeve Spider-Man, um, the 80s television show of the Hulk, right? I was a huge fan of the Hulk, but my favorite superhero was Superman. And what's been um, great about the kind of the resurgence of all of these Marvel, Marvel movies and DC movies is that my boys have had the opportunity to become, it's a revival, if you will. They've also have become great fans of the same superheroes that I was a fan of. So, um, as you see, my favorite superhero was Superman. And so now it was very easy for them to kind of become fans of Superman. And as you see the resurgence of all Avengers, the revival of the new Spider-Man and Batman, right? You know, it's very easy to want to fly. <laughs> right? It's very easy to take on the persona of Captain America or... Or, or the Hulk, or, or Black Panther, or, or up here, Jace's favorite, his head's cut off, but Iron Man, right? And so, I, so now I don't really have to tell them about my superheroes, you know, especially with the video games like the Lego superheroes, the Lego Indiana Jones, like their video games, not only are they seeing, but they're also playing. So even superheroes like Batman, like, they don't have to hear about it, they're seeing it and partaking it, right? So, and they're also, they wanna be them, they wanna wear the costumes, even from small ages, even up to even right now, I'm sure Jace would like to be Iron Man. <laughs> and he's practically shaving.
But you don't have to convince a kid, like, you can't fly, right? They instantly want to put on a cape. You just have to keep them from going to the rooftop. <laughs> like, no, you can't go to the rooftop. They immediately just want to fly. And so a popular question would arise, and I'm sure you've probably talked around about this around the dinner table with your kids or even maybe in the office. What superpower would you most like to have? Would you want to be Spider-Man, shoot webs? Would you want to be, have the ability to fly? Would you want invisibility? Would you want super speed? Would you want telekinesis? Would you want super strength like the hawk? Would you want to shoot webs? Would you want to be able to have mind reading? What super power would you most like to have? If you want to fly, raise your hand. You want what? All right. You want to instantly heal like Wolverine? Super speed, raise your hand. Jen wants super speed. She has the gift of mind reading. <laughs> she has. How about super strength, the hawk? <clears throat> Lynn wants that. Linda wants that. <clears throat> Telekinesis, being able to move things with your mind. <laughs> Jim? <laughs> Jim's like, bring me the remote. <laughs> Ronald Lee's like, amen. <laughs> Bring me cookies and milk. Scoop, scoop. Mind reading, mind control. Oh, Carson. Dang. Tells me a lot. <laughs> so let me present this to you this scenario. What if I told you with all of the varied desired gifts and the powers that you all want, what if I said this to you? And I'm sure some of us, even though you didn't raise your hand, some of you would be like, oh yeah, I want that, but I didn't raise my hand. What if I said this to you? What if I said, wait here. Wait here at 860 for a few days. And in a few days, power will come upon you, and you'll get your desired gift. How would you respond? <laughs> would you stay? Big Mama's like, I'd stay. <laughs> oh, I'd do it. Right? And you, some of you know where I'm going with this. This is exactly what happened to the disciples. And we'll pick up the story in Luke chapter 24. Because Jesus had been preparing them for this moment when he ascended. And he said, if you just wait here in Jerusalem, power is going to come upon you. And look how they respond. And he says this in Luke 24, 46 to 53. And then he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and raise from the dead on the third day. It's also written that this message would be proclaimed in authority of his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And listen to how he says this. He says it to like, I'm telling it to these boys right now. Like, right? And this is what Jesus said as he builds anticipation for power. And now, and now, I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven.
So they're in Jerusalem. Then he leads them out to Bethany where he ascends, lifting up his hands to heaven. He blessed them. How did they respond? While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. Could you imagine watching that? He left them. He was taken up to heaven. So they worshipped him. And they returned to Jerusalem filled with great, yes, joy. And they spent all of their time in the temple praising God. Anticipation is going to happen. Power is coming. What's that power? The power of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost. The power of words of wisdom, words of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of prophecy, discerning spirits, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues and miracles. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what he promised them. The Holy Spirit comes to fill you with power. Luke tells the same story. He revisits the story in Acts 1, 1 through 10. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Can you feel the excitement? Can you see the excitement in the disciples? It's like kids going to camp. <clears throat> he meets us at the level of our expectation. And by the way, this promised power is for all of us. This promised power is for all of us. Amen? Amen? Lord, fill us to overflowing more Holy Spirit. It's the will of God for every believer. In Joel 2.28, it says this, Then after going and doing all those things, I will pour out my Spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. If the Holy Spirit is pouring out His Spirit, how much of it do you want? How much? How much? How much? All of it. If He's pouring out His Spirit in these last days, how much of it do you want? We all have to answer that question. Lord, if you're pouring out your spirit in these last days, I will pour it out, Lord. Pour it out all on me. I want it all. The Holy Spirit is available for every believer. We all have the gift. We all have the Holy Spirit in us, but we want more. The same Spirit of God who raised Christ from the dead lives in us. But we want more power, more glory, more Spirit. Lord, speak to my life and change my... Lord, speak to my heart and change my life and manifest yourself in me. Not only to have more power, but to be totally full of the Holy Spirit's power. <clears throat> More. More. Jesus, let's see some of the New Testament saints and even Jesus himself. It says this. This is the temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus, full, Jesus full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Then Jesus ate nothing at that time and became very hungry. So Jesus enters the desert full of the Holy Spirit. Then Jesus returned to Galilee. He comes out of the desert. Then Jesus returned to Galilee filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know where I'm going to go with this. As he comes out of the desert, when he came from the village from Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went into the synagogue as usual. On the Sabbath, he stood up to read the scriptures. He rolls out the scroll of Isaiah. 
that was handed to him. And what does he say? Who is upon him? The who? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because who has anointed him? He has anointed me. Who anointed Jesus for ministry? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit anointed Jesus for the works of the ministry. Jesus needed the Holy Spirit for the ministry. If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit for ministry, so do I. If the Holy Spirit needed the Holy Spirit, so do you. Jesus himself put the emphasis on the Holy Spirit. And we're just going to go through these real quickly. Ananias prayed for Saul, who became Paul, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's Acts 9, 17 through 19. Barnabas. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit, strong in faith. And many people were brought to the Lord. Stephen. It says three times in the scripture that Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. Stephen full of the Holy Spirit. Then he's being stoned. He looks up to heaven and Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the Lord. And he was full of the Holy Spirit. All of the old New Testament saints, full of the Holy Spirit. And you'll know this one, this beautiful Christmas story. <clears throat> In verse 35, Gabriel tells Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And as soon as she says, may your word to me be fulfilled, the Holy Spirit comes upon Mary. She runs to see Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb. Who's the baby? John the Baptist. When John the Baptist heard Mary's voice, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. I tell you what, the Bible is not boring. We are. <laughs> The Bible is not boring. You and I are filled with the Holy Spirit. Two pregnant women. And when a baby hears Mary's voice, her, his mom is filled with the Holy Spirit. Who, what does that scene look like? When you read stories and encounters like this, you can't help but wonder why through church, recent church history, has the person in the ministry of the Holy Spirit been so neglected? Why is the Holy Spirit the forgotten member of the Trinity? All of these saints, and there's more, these are just, this is just a few. Why is the Holy Spirit just ignored? You can't say it, you can't talk about it. Why? If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't be here. Maybe you wouldn't be here. I need him every day. Him, he, Jesus needed him. Anointed for ministry. Mary needed him. Paul needed him. If you read that story in Acts, where Saul gets anointed, he's filled with the Holy Spirit, he immediately goes to speak to the Jews, and they immediately want to stone him. The Holy, being filled with the Holy Spirit, he was immediate, that would, that's what made the difference in Saul's life. He's filled with the Holy Spirit, he goes to preach, and he immediately offended the Jews, and it says he wanted, they wanted to kill him. Why? Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. The same people he was trying to kill wanted to kill him because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. I understand you have bad experiences. Maybe it's nervousness, a lack of faith, a constant disagreement with theology. But we need more of the Holy Spirit. And I'll confess to you this morning, myself, me, 
and it will come as a shock to no one. Ryan Little is very inadequate. You didn't amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I, myself, Ryan Little, I am very inadequate. I can't do this on my own. I can't do, I, I, don't, I can't do this in my own strength. I can't father boys in my own strength. I can't be married in my own strength. I can't minister in my own strength. I need the Holy Spirit. I need an advantage. And when Jesus tells the disciples, nevertheless, I tell you, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I don't go away, the helper will not come to you. I need an advantage. You need an advantage. I need help. I need an advantage. And when Pentecost came, they got an advantage. They got help. <laughs> and that advantage and that help is available to Freddie. Yeah, buddy. I saw you get deer-eyed. That advantage and that help is available to Jack every day. Why? Because on my own, I am inadequate. Paul is inadequate. Saul, Saul I should say, is inadequate. Mary is inadequate. Everyone that makes up the entire Bible is inadequate, but they need This morning, it's available to you, and all you need to ask for is more. Fill me to overflowing. If he's pouring it out, I want it all. Try coupling a supernatural salvation with your own natural strength. Your salvation is supernatural. Try coupling that with your natural strengths. Your own try hard. That'll end up in burnout, bitterness, we leave, and in some cases, leave the faith entirely. Our supernatural salvation needs a supernatural Let me say that again. If you didn't know what I did there, I didn't get baptized, I rerounded. <laughs> Our supernatural salvation requires or needs a supernatural power. So our prayer is, fill me up. Fill us up. As he pours out his spirit, Lord, fill me up more every day, not just Sundays between 10.15 and 11.30. Fill me up. Fill me up Monday. Fill me up Tuesday, Lord. I need it every day. When I go to work, when I cut grass, Father, when I go to school, Lord, fill me up. Lord, if you're willing to receive it, if you're willing to give it, I'm willing to receive it, God. I'm, I'm dry. I'm thirsty. Lord, I need it every day. Make yourself manifest in my life. I need, I need wisdom and revelation, God. Why do we need it? Why? Why? I'm glad you asked. Ephesians chapter 5 says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are unwise. Make the most of every opportunity. Why? Why do we need filled up? Because these days are evil. 
These days are evil. Why do you need it? Why do you need it at school? Why do you need it at your job? Why do you need it in the world? If I said, hey, are these days evil? Every one of you would be like, amen, brother. What's the antidote to evil days? Anointed, powerful, spirit-filled people. Not pastors, not ministry leaders. You, Dave Parrott, Vita, my mom, Bev, the antidote to evil days are spirit-filled believers. Stop ignoring him and just say more. Amen. I don't care how it comes. I don't care if I speak in tongues. Lord, just give it to me. Just make yourself manifest. Make the most of every opportunity. I don't care if it comes. I don't care if I run. I don't care. I, just give it, Lord. Because the days of evil, don't act, like, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. There's a mandate on your life. There's a mandate on your church. We are inside a closed church. Why is that? Was it because they were void of power? Is it because they were doing it in their own strength? Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Show joy. And make music with your hearts and give thanks for everything to God. Oh God, we've got it all wrong. Why do we need to filled up? Because the days are evil. Amen. We're not effective when we're empty. Floor, fill us up. Fill me up. Give thanks for everything. Lord, thank you. Every day. Every day. Spirit-filled believers. And I'll tell you this. This is the book of Acts summed up. The book of Acts is spirit-filled believers impacting evil days. Smith Wigglesworth said, it's called the book of Acts, not the book of thoughts. I'll say that again. It's called the book of Acts, not the book of thoughts. Why? Because it's spirit-filled believers impacting, scattered, impacting the world around them. They were acting, they were scattered, they were outside, impacting. Spirit filled, 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 filled. I'm sorry if I scared you this morning when you saw me carrying this gas can. I don't have ill intent. <laughs> Imagine, imagine you, imagine your car this morning, you leave the church today and you get gas. <clears throat> Would you put 12 cents in it? I realize with the gas prices this morning, that's a very real possibility. 
would you put 12 cents in the tank and head down the road? Or would you? <laughs> oh, you would, huh? <laughs> You fill it up. It's available, right? Because if you put 12 cents in it, you realize maybe that in the moment, it wouldn't get you very far. You'd end up like my man here. You get a little bit down the road and you'd run out of gas. Why? Because the car doesn't say full all the time. And it's something that's just a necessary to constantly keep putting gas in the car. It doesn't say full all the time. And we're not always totally full all the time. We're not always totally full of joy. We're not always totally empowered. We're not always totally obedient to God. We're not always totally ready to serve others. We're not always totally full of hope. But when we have been full, When we have been full of the Holy Spirit, you remember those moments when we're totally full and empowered and you read about all of those stories when the New Testament saints or the Old Testament saints are full and how they're written. The hall of faith, full of faith, full of faith. We're always like, I wish the devil would. I wish the devil would car across me. Not today, Satan. That only comes when you're full of the Holy Spirit. Not today. I wish the devil would come at me today, this Monday morning. Ain't that right, Ralph? I wish the devil would today, because I'm empowered. I wish the devil would today, Robin. Empowered, yep. I wish the devil would today, but it's hard to have that empowerment and that authority when you're empty. Listen to Paul's, Paul's prayer for the Christians in Rome, and you know this prayer. You've probably heard it. Romans 15, 13, and he says this. I pray that the God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with the joy of, in the presence because you trust Him. Then you will overflow. Listen to his verbiage as Paul prays for the Christians in Rome because Paul knows that there's more to be had. He's proof positive of it in his life and ministry. I pray that the God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the what? Power of the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Amen. May you, may we, may I be filled with more Confident hope, joy, peace, patience, kindness, the fruit that only He produces, not the law, but He. Paul's prayer, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill to overflow. Because if it doesn't come, This is how you might walk through life, through work, through your family. This is my, how you'll meander into church next week. Filling is available. He wants to pour out his spirit. It's just how much of it do you want? Every day. (laughs) 
as Keith comes. If the Holy Spirit desires to pour out His Spirit and to fill us up, I desire to receive everything that He has for me. And with every head bowed and every eyes closed, you might say, Pastor Ryan, I don't even know who Jesus is. I know who he is, but I'm not living for him. And if that's you, I'm not going to belabor this point. You say, Pastor Ryan, I just want to come back to Jesus. I just want to say yes to him for the first time. I just want to say yes to him for the seventh time. I just want to say yes to him for the hundredth time. There's room at the cross for you. And if, you, if that's you today, my friend, I just invite you to raise your hand and say, Ryan, I'm coming back to him this morning. If that's you, just raise your hand and say, I'm coming back to Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so with every head bowed and every eyes closed, let me pray for you this morning. Lord, I invite your presence to pour out more in this place. I invite your presence, Lord, to pour out more. And if you want more in this place, I invite you to make that your prayer. Holy Spirit, give me everything in the name of Jesus. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. More, Lord. Fill us up, God. Overflow. Lord, we're not satisfied in the name of Jesus. Lord, make your presence manifest. Lord, this on Pentecost Sunday, where your fire came, where your power came, Lord, we need your power. And if you're willing to receive it, if you're willing to ask for it, just lift your hands and say, more, Lord, more, Father, more, overflow, Lord, in this place, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, overflow my container, Lord. I need the helper. I need the way maker, Father, in the name of Jesus. I am sick of being stuck. I am sick of being stranded. I am sick, Father, of being empty and abandoned in the name of Jesus, Lord. More, Lord, of your spirit, Father. And don't let it stop here. Keep continuing to ask for it and seek it. Seek the Holy Spirit. Seek He the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus overflow in my life, in my family, in my job. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask, Lord, for more of your spirit, Father. Make yourself manifest, Father, in the name of Jesus. More love, more power, more glory, Father. We are not satisfied, Lord, until we have all of you in Jesus' name. Lord, listen to the cry of your saints, Father, even as they cry out into your spirit, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.